Hello there, Dr. Solomon here, Chronic Pain GP, and today's brief video is about the use of a group of medications called neuropathic pain medications. So these medications are used to treat chronic nerve pain, uh, but can also be used in other conditions where there is an element of central sensitivity, uh, as we've mentioned previously, and these conditions include things like fibromyalgia and chronic lower back pain. So pain patients can describe their nerve pain in many different ways. Um, the most common language used can be uh, words such as uh, burning, dull, sharp, electric-like, um, the feeling of someone using a poker on the skin, uh, the feeling of perhaps uh, creepy crawlies on the skin. It's fairly common and can be quite debilitating at times. And the most common causes are um, conditions which we're seeing a lot more of in general practice, uh, including diabetes. Um, another common cause is after um, a shingles infection, uh, what we term post-hepatic neuropathy. Um, other possible causes um, are after a, a cerebral vascular event, such as a stroke. Um, and nowadays we're also seeing more and more patients um, who've had chemotherapy for serious conditions and they end up having a neuropathy or neuropathic type pains, particularly in the periphery. There's also uh, mineral deficiencies um, and uh, alcohol excess can sometimes cause neuropathic pains. Um, and there is quite a specific type of neuropathic pain which we do see a lot of in general practice and that's uh, trigeminal neuralgia which is an extremely painful condition um, arising from the trigeminal nerve which is present um, on each side of the face. Now what I've done is I've grouped the medications that we use into four uh, unique groups um, and they are as follows. So there's the tricyclic antidepressant types of medication um, include in medications such as amitriptyline, nortriptyline, uh, clomipramine, dosolipin, um, and the most commonly one used in this group is amitriptyline or nortriptyline. The anticonvulsants, uh, which are the gabapentin type medications, um, its cousin pregabalin, um, and slightly atypical anticonvulsants, which we rarely use in chronic pain but can be, uh, particularly for things like headaches, uh, which is valproate and topiramate. Uh, the antidepressant group. Um, contains uh, a group of medications called the SNRIs and these are commonly used ones are called duloxetine and venaflaxin and there's quite specific ones sometimes we use uh, lidocaine plasters are quite common um, as mentioned in the after shingles infection and uh, carbamazepine um, nice have recommended this as first line for trigeminal neuralgia now unfortunately there are common side effects with these types of medications and the most common ones include drowsiness dizziness um, restlessness, uh, weight gain, dry mouth and constipation. Um, GI side effects are quite common including nausea, vomiting and sedation. Um, but one of the things I also mentioned to patients is often the medications can work but they may take three or four weeks uh, for the full effect to kick in. Now the mode of actions for these medications are slightly different for each specific group. For example, amitriptyline uh, works on the endogenous hormones, noradrenaline and serotonin, um, whereas the gabapentin uh, type medications work on calcium channels um, from an intercellular level. And what they do do essentially is to reduce the pain signals traveling up the nerves into the spinal cord and the central nervous system. So one of the questions I often do get asked by patients is do these medications actually work? Because often some of the side effects can be intolerable and patients need to weigh up um, their use against the possibility of side effects. Now, uh, the Cochrane Collaboration and, and Database, uh, which is a fantastic resource uh, for patients and clinicians, um, have looked at these medications. And what I'll do is I'll post the links um, in the comment section of the video and then you can make your own mind up. Now, some of the data does suggest that uh, up to uh, half of the patients that use these medications may, may be on more than one type of neuropathic medication. Um, and some studies have documented um, increased efficacy uh, to treat neuropathic pain um, using more than one um, neuropathic type medication. So, for example, uh, amitriptyline and pregabalin. Now, unfortunately, um, uh, the gabapentin type medications have been in the press recently um, and the current advice is to use these types of medications with caution um, as there is a risk um, of these being used um, for recreational purposes um, and so we as clinicians have to be careful and have to obviously make a judgment um, when we are prescribing these medications to patients. 
Although um, I don't feel this is a massive issue in primary care, um, as clinicians, um, particularly those working in deprived areas or in prison populations, we just have to be careful with our prescribing, um, similar to um, the same with opioid type medications. So my recommendations for using these type of medications in, in chronic pain and chronic nerve pain is as follows. Only use when the benefits outweigh the risks. Um, you should just always establish treatment goals before starting treatment. Um, as the same with opioids, it's fairly useful to start low and go slow. And if you do feel like uh, patients need to come off these medications, I would also recommend uh, doing a slow uh, downwards titration. You can use more than one anti-nerve medication at a time, um, but you just have to be careful with regard to side effects and tolerability. Uh, avoid alcohol with these medications. Um, always try and review the benefits and harms on a fairly regular basis. And if you feel the pain is becoming uncontrolled by use of these uh, medications, then it's always advisable to refer onwards to specialists uh, like myself or um, secondary care pain specialists. Now, in conclusion, um, the pool of medicines we can use in chronic pain is, in my opinion, rapidly reducing. And therefore, um, I feel uh, cr these type of medications to help nerve pain and chronic pain in general um, are very useful. Now, there is evidence for their use in chronic pain. However, side effects are quite common. So um, with my experience with chronic pain patients, uh, uh, as well as looking at all the evidence for the use of neuropathic pain medications in chronic pain, um, my conclusion is that it's a definite thumbs up for the use of these medications in chronic pain conditions. Now, next time I will um, try and assess the use of a different type of medication um, in chronic pain, and these include the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory meds, or NSAIDs for short. So once again, thank you for listening. Um, please um, remember to subscribe, like and share far and wide. Uh, leave any feedback down below. And once again, thank you very much for your time.